What's going on guys, it's Ryan Huber. I'm back after a little hiatus for another video because I just got my new FAA medical. I just renewed my medical in the last couple of days while I was home in Phoenix, Arizona. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's like to get a medical, who needs a medical, uh, how do you get one? How long does it last? And how complicated is the process? Do you have to strip naked and get every organ scanned? Is it super difficult or is it pretty straightforward? And I wanted to add, answer some of those questions for aspiring pilots and yeah. So who needs a medical? So according to FAR 61.23, uh, that will outline all the different uh, pieces of who needs a medical, all the requirements, everything to do with medicals. So who needs a medical? Uh, there's different ratings as a pilot, you guys might be aware. There's airline transport pilots, commercial pilots, and private pilots. Yes, there's some things like recreational pilots and sport pilots and things like that, but we're not gonna get into that because that's kind of a Mm, kind of taboo really. Um, the main things are private, commercial, and ATP. So if you're trying to get your private pilot certificate or you're gonna be a private pilot and that's your main goal, uh, you need a third class medical. So uh, a third class medical is a little bit less restrictive than the second class or first class medical. The second class medical is what you'll need if you're gonna be a commercial pilot and exercising commercial privileges. And a first class medical if you're gonna be exercising ATP privileges. So, which one should you get? Uh, that depends really on your situation. So, if you wanna be a private pilot and that's really your goal, you just wanna fly recreationally for fun, you maybe wanna buy your own airplane, do it as a hobby, uh, I would just recommend getting your third class medical. Your third class medical, if you're under 40, lasts 60 calendar months, so five years. If you're over 40, it's 24 calendar months, so two years, so it lasts a while, you don't have to do it very often. It's pretty straightforward. I can list or put a link or something to the, the requirements of what all they do uh, and talk about that in a little bit. But that's what I'd recommend if that's your goal. If your goal is to get your private, but you wanna continue on and become a commercial pilot, I'd recommend going ahead and just get your first class because you're gonna need it eventually anyway. And if say you only pass the third class and you're not sure if you can pass a first class, and then you get all your ratings and then you find out that you can't even get a first class and you can't exercise your commercial privileges or your ATP privileges, then uh, that's really that really sucks, right? You don't wanna be in that position. So depending on your end goal, I would go for the highest medical that you could possibly obtain. And we'll talk about things uh, that go into what those medicals entail in a second. Um, but how do you get a medical? What is the process like to get that? So to get a medical, it's really simple. Just go to faa.gov and you can find a link to Med Express. So if you're a first time applicant or even if you're renewing your medical, there's a Med Express FAA link website that you go to and you basically just answer some simple questions about your general health. If you're taking any prescriptions, uh, if you've ever been diagnosed with certain conditions, if there's anything medically wrong with you that they, you need to make the FAA aware of, and um, you pretty much fill, it, fill this out. If you're concerned about anything, you know, look into your specific situation. Uh, if you might have some kind of condition, there is special issuance medicals, uh, so the FAA might be able to work with you. But for the most part, I would keep things pretty basic and kind of relaxed. Um, there's no need to over disclose uh, things that shouldn't be disclosed. So, you know, if you if you have a bad day and you're feeling sad, you know, don't put on the thing that you're de you know depressed and suicidal or something like that. So, I mean, just just kind of keep it general, basic. Uh, I caution you with what you should, just just disclose what needs to be disclosed. We'll say that. And uh, you do that. You fill out your Med, Ex Med Express on the FAA website. Um, send it all through and it will give you a form called the 8500-9 or 8420-2 form. It's a little form, you can print it out. I don't even think you need to print it out, but I did when I went to my medical and it'll have a confirmation number and you just need to take a picture of that confirmation number to give to your AME, your medical examiner, so they can look up that confirmation number, see all your information and they can start the medical exam. So um, you do that. Uh, how do you find an AME? How do you find an examiner? Same thing, pretty easy, faa.gov. Uh, you can click a little thing and find designee and you search for an AME 
And you can look at your different country, area, state, whatever, and find somebody to work with. Uh, I went with Burr Ross in the Phoenix area, the Scottsdale area, J. Burr Ross. Always done a great job with me, so that's who I use. If you're in the Phoenix, Scottsdale local area, otherwise just look somebody up, maybe post in a Facebook group, even one of my Facebook groups, hey, who do you guys use for a medical in this certain area? And I'm sure somebody can point you to a good person to do it. Um, all in all, it's really simple. You go in, it only takes about 15 minutes. It's super quick. And uh, there'll be different things depending on how old you are. They last different lengths. I kind of briefly mentioned, touched on it, but uh, third class is 60 calendar months under 40, 24 calendar months if you're over 40. A second class is 24 calendar months. And a first class is 12 calendar months uh, if you're under 40. And if you're over 40, a first class every six calendar months. So if you're over 40 and you're exercising ATP privileges, you're an airline pilot or a professional pilot, it's every six months. And then uh, what, what all do they do? You know, what, what goes on in the medical? So what to expect uh, for mine, uh, I go in, they take my weight, they take my height, get a general consensus of who you are. And then they'll have you pee in a cup. They test your urine for different metabolites and things for diseases and viruses or something like that, as far as I understand. Um, I don't think, from everything I've seen, they don't drug test that urine, but you shouldn't be doing drugs if you're gonna be a pilot anyway. Uh, so don't do drugs. Um, after you pee in a cup, they'll check your vision. The vision test, a lot of people worry about the vision test, uh, and even for me, it's, it's pretty tough. I actually have corrective vision, and this is a big myth bust. Uh, if you think that you need 20-20 perfect vision uncorrected, that's false. Uh, your vision just has to be corrected to 20-20 with glasses or contacts. So for me, I wear glasses when I go in, I wear glasses and contacts. So I wear glasses when I go in and do the test. As long as it's corrected to 20-20, then you're okay. And um, you know, there's plenty, plenty of old guys, 60, 70 years old, still passing their medicals uh, with glasses and stuff. So for us younger guys, don't be overly concerned with it. Just do your best on the vision test. And as long as you're not blind, um, you know, you should be corrected to 2020. So you can wear glasses, that's, that's okay. Uh, third class is 2040, corrected to 2040 vision, if I'm not mistaken, I'll punt that up here. Uh, so, uh, but first and second class is corrected to 2020. So if you're overly worried about your vision, um, you know, check. But, um, you know, as long as you have a good glasses or contacts prescription, there's nothing crazy going on. You should be okay. Don't, don't worry about it too much. They do a vision check. It's for me that you look into the little thing and there's like a, a C, there's a circle with like a piece cut out to the right, up, left, or down. And you have to say like up, right, left, down, and then they have letters and can you read the, what's the lowest line you can read type of thing. And then they'll check um, where your eyes meet. So there's like a line and they see where your like lateral and vertical center of vision is. Uh, but it's not that hard. Uh, they'll do that, they'll do a breathing check. You'll go into a room, they'll check your breathing, breathe in and out, make sure your heart's okay. Um, check your blood pressure, check your hearing. They'll check your driving records. Uh, that's part of the Med Express form. In the background, they run your driving records. So if you have a DUI, if you have any crazy driving violations or anything that needs to be reported, make sure to report it. If you have a felony misdemeanor, that goes into the medical stuff. So um, we have to be good. You know, you can't get into trouble as a pilot. Uh, it's a very professional job. You got to be professional. If you're over 40, or I think when you, if you're 35 or every year from 40 on, you have to do what's called an electrocardiogram. It's basically a fancy heart test. I don't know because I'm not 40 yet, but if you are over 40, I believe the first and second class require that. Uh, so that's just an added heart thing. So um, yeah, that's that. But I hope this video taught you guys a little bit about medicals, uh, what you may need, how to get it. It's really pretty simple. It's 15 minutes once a year for me. Um, and it, it, it's not that difficult. Uh, one thing uh, to highlight on as well is if you have a first class and then say it lapses, so after 12 months, the first class isn't valid anymore, that now becomes a second or a third class. I think the first goes to a third class, but or a second goes to a third class. So it depends on what uh, privileges you're using. So you can only exercise ATP privileges for that first year in the first class. 
but you can be a private pilot and exercise those privileges for the five years. And then there's basic med and some other stuff, but we're not gonna cover that. Well, I hope this video gave you guys some good general insights into the FAA medical process. It's fairly simple, don't overcomplicate it. I'll put the links for Med Express and the FAA thing down below. And uh, stay healthy guys, live your life to the fullest, sort of your full potential, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.